I'm Beth. And I'm Beth. Welcome, Welcome to, to Physics, Physics with Beth and Beth. <laughs> Hello everyone. Welcome back to Physics with Beth and Beth. I'm Beth and today we are continuing our discussion of AP Physics 1 Unit 3, which is a discussion of work, energy, and power by continuing our little talk from our last video on work. So in this video, we're going to do a quick little example problem of how to calculate work. So let's get started. Our little problem here is this. We have a 10 kilogram ball, so a really heavy ball, maybe more like a cannonball, is dropped from a height of five meters and experiences a drag of 55 newtons. Anytime we have a problem like that, the very first step is always going to be to draw a picture, but not just a fun picture, we have to draw a helpful picture. So let's do that. We have our little cannonball here. I know that it is going, it is falling, it's dropped from a height of 5 meters, so that means it's going to experience the force of gravity pulling it down. So I have the force due to gravity right here. And then I also know it's experiencing a drag. Well, it's dropping, it's falling straight down, so this is my displacement here, delta x, is falling straight down. I know my drag is always going to be directly in the in the direction directly opposite of my movement. So if I'm moving straight down, my force due to drag is going to be pointed straight up. So it will be like this. So my force due to drag pulling straight up, I have my force due to gravity pulling straight down. And there we are, that's our picture, we're all done. Now let's go and get started on some of these calculations. What is the force due to gravity on our little cannonball here? Well, y'all are old hats at this by now. We know that the force due to gravity is just going to be equal to the mass of our object times the acceleration of gravity, or g here. The mass of our object is 10 kilograms. The acceleration due to gravity is 9.81. That's an 8 meters per second squared. I just multiply these two values together. 10 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared is going to be 98.1 newtons, but then we know that this is a negative 98.1 newtons because this is pulling downward in the negative direction. So this is negative 98.1 newtons. Okay, very nice. Well, what about the work done by the force of gravity? I'm getting into some new material here. Well, we know from our equation that Miss Beth and I like um, that the work due to the force of gravity is going to be equal to the component of the force of gravity that is parallel to our motion times our displacement. So we know that our object is falling directly downward. Our direction of motion is directly downward. The component of our force due to gravity that is also pointed downward is all of it. So we just are going to multiply our force due to gravity, which is negative 98.1 newtons. And we're going to multiply this by our displacement. Displacement is a vector, so we have to include a sign that represents which direction it is. We know it is falling from a height of 5 meters, so it is going to fall down 5 meters. So that means our displacement is negative 5 meters. So here, when I calculate my work, I have negative 98.1 newtons times negative 5 meters. When I multiply those together, I can't do that in my head, but thankfully I have notes. That gives us 491 joules, or newtons times meters gives us joules. All right, so because this work value is positive, since I had a negative times a negative, my force was pulling in the same direction that my object was moving, I also have a positive work, which means that the force due to gravity is giving energy to my object here, my cannonball. So the object is gaining energy because of the force due to gravity. That's what work means. All right, now what about the work done by drag though? Well, the work done by the force of drag is going to be equal to the component of our drag that is parallel to our displacement times our displacement times our delta x. Well, our force due to drag is pointing straight up and our displacement is straight down, so the component of our force due to drag that is parallel to our displacement is just our force due to drag. Nothing too complicated there, so that's just going to be a positive 55 newtons, because this is pointed upwards, right? And then our displacement is just going to be the same as in our last problem. It's a negative 5 meters, because we are falling downwards. 
So we have positive 55 newtons times negative 5 meters. That is going to give us negative 275 joules. All right, so now we have a negative value for work. What does that mean? Well, that means that our drag is doing work that is taking energy away from our cannonball. And that kind of makes sense intuitively, right? Air resistance is slowing down the cannonball. It's making it fall slower. It feels intuitively right that something that is slowing down should have less energy. So our force due to drag is doing negative work on our object here. It is taking energy away. And now, how do we calculate total work? Well, it's just like when we were calculating forces and we summed up all of our forces to find our total net force. We're going to do the same thing here. Our total work is just going to be equal to the sum of all of our different works, which here is just going to be the work due to the force of gravity plus the work due to the force of drag. So I'm going to crouch down. The work due to the force of gravity plus the work due to drag. So that's just going to be, if I can avoid knocking things off, that's just going to be, I didn't avoid knocking things off. That's just going to be this positive 491 joules minus 275 joules. Just some simple addition, nothing too terrible, right? So 491 joules minus 275 joules is going to be equal to 216 joules. And so that is the total work that is being done on our cannonball. That is the total amount of energy that is being given to our cannonball by the forces applied to it. All right. But now, before we wrap all of this up, I do want to address one thing, which is, well, what if we would decide to use the equation that is given on your AP Physics 1 equation sheet, the equation that my fellow Beth and I dislike so much? So um, I'm going to work this out in blue. So let's say, let's do the force due to gravity first. So if we use that equation, that's the work due to the force due to gravity is going to be equal to, oh, my force of gravity my force of gravity times d times cosine theta. So my force due to gravity is going to be negative 98.1 newtons. d is distance, which is a scalar quantity, not a vector. So instead of having a negative 5 meters, I'm just going to be using 5 meters, as that's the distance that my cannonball travels. And then times cosine theta. Well, my force due to gravity is pointed downward. My distance is also downward. The angle between these two, theta, is actually zero degrees. So I'm going to multiply this by cosine of theta. And this implies that distance is a vector. It's not. It's a scalar. So cosine of theta is cosine of zero degrees. Thankfully, cosine of zero is 1. So I'm going to get negative 98.1 times 5 which gives me 491 joules, but I get a negative sign because I used force of gravity here. So this is why my fellow Beth and I dislike the equation that I've been working out in blue, because you end up getting a negative 491 joules, even though your gravity and your displacement are pointed in the same direction. So this, we know from context, should be a positive value. So whenever you, if you decide to use this equation that's on your AP Physics sheet, that's completely okay. But just make sure that you know that you should end up with a positive value if your force and your displacement are pointing in the same direction. You only end up with a negative value if they're pointed in opposite directions, like we got down here. So now let's just calculate out our force due to drag, the work done by our force due to drag um, in part C here, and I'll also do this in blue. So our work due to the force of drag is going to be equal to the force of drag times our distance times cosine of theta. So our force due to drag, that's 55 newtons, and that's positive 55 newtons. Our distance is going to be negative 5 meters. I'm sorry, positive 5 meters. Because distance is a scalar, not a vector. So we're falling 5 meters, so this is just a positive 5. And then we have cosine of theta. Well, our movement downward is, well, directly downward. Our force is pointed directly upward. So the angle between these two is going to be 180 degrees. They're in directly opposite directions, right? 
So I'm going to multiply this by cosine of 180. Cosine of 180 is negative 1, so it's negative 1 times 55 times 5, which is going to give me 55 newtons times 5 meters times cosine of 180 is negative 275 joules. So in this case, we did get the right sign, so that's good. But in our last problem, we didn't. So sometimes this formula, depending on how you decide to define your ups and your downs and your positives and your negatives, sometimes you'll get the right sign, sometimes you'll end up with the opposite one. So just, you'll always get the right magnitude, but you might get the wrong sign. So just keep in mind the context of the problem. Here, the force due to gravity and our movement were pointing, sorry, the force due to drag and our movement were pointing in opposite directions. That force is taking energy away from the system. We need a negative work. Here, we have the force due to gravity is pointing downward. That's in the same direction as our movement. So this should be doing positive work. So just keep that in mind whenever you use this equation. And this is why Ms. Smith and I prefer this one, because it's a lot easier to make sure you always get the right sign. All of that to say, that is this problem worked out in multiple ways. Thank you so much for sticking through all of that with me. Y'all are troopers and happy physicsing.